Hey guys, what's up? Welcome once again to IELTS with Messi. I hope you have had such an absolutely fantastic day. I am super excited to be able to do another episode to share with you all. So this time, we're going to analyze something different. We're going to get to a bar chart. As I always say, task one is all about providing a summary and a comparison where you need to be selective regarding what counts as key information. So are you all ready? Set, let's go. Okay, here's an example of a bar chart. Of course, in this case, there are two bar charts, which is to be noted in our summary. So let's just go through it. The charts below show the results of a survey on happiness ratings for married and unmarried Americans and the effect of children on the overall ratings of married couples. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. So, as usual, we read the question box, the task in the first place paying attention to the keywords we're going to use in our summary. Now, let's take a closer look at the charts individually. The first chart represents happiness ratings across married and unmarried people in percentage terms, right? Ratings related to married people on the left and the ones related to unmarried people on the right. As you can see, the numbers are all exact. So, for the most part, we do not need to use adverbs of degree, such as around or approximately. I mean, it makes sense, right? Now, is there any other parameter by which our information is divided? Here it is. Age groups, each of which matches a certain color. So, that was our first chart. Let's move on to the second one. Alright, the second bar chart represents happiness ratings among married couples. These ratings are also presented in terms of percentages. As can be seen from the chart, the only distinguishing factor here is whether or not couples have children. Alright then. This is exactly what you are supposed to do in the first stage of your pre-writing, that is, the analysis of the task. It should take no more than one minute of your time. Now, we need to see how we can go about structuring our summary. But before that, please do remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel and turn on the notification so that you don't miss out on any of the upcoming episodes. As you know, your summary is made up of three parts, namely an introduction, an overview, and two or three body paragraphs. Once again, some of the things to be avoided in your task one are conclusions, personal opinions, as well as inferences. If you feel you need more information on this, please make sure to watch the previous episode on line graphs, in which I explain all about the organization of paragraphs, in particular, the overview. Okay then, now we need to see how this actually works for writing up our bar charts. In order to provide your readers with a well-structured introductory sentence, you need to paraphrase the information in the task. As such, using the keywords we have previously identified, we can now write a sentence or two for our introduction. We have already learned that a good introduction includes the name of the illustration, what it shows, and the period of time. Oh yes. In this case, the time period is undisclosed, which usually means that the provided numbers and figures serve as general estimates of what is likely to occur at any given time period. So the desired tense to utilize would be present simple. 
All right, here's an example. The bar charts provide information about the percentage of people in the United States who are happy in terms of their age groups, marital status, as well as whether or not they have children. So, as you can see, I started with the name of the illustration, in this case, the bar charts. It would be a good idea to refer to both bar charts using the plural S. Then, I paraphrase the verb phrase. Instead of show, I wrote provide information about. What is more, I paraphrased happiness ratings for Americans and wrote the percentage of people in the United States who are happy. Here, I did my best to make sure that my sentence does not sound simple. In fact, using the relative pronoun who, I created a structurally complex sentence. I also made use of two useful paraphrasing techniques to make sure that large parts of the task are not copied. To be more specific, I paraphrased the nationality and used the name of the country instead. Additionally, I changed the part of the speech of the noun happiness and used the corresponding adjective. Please make sure to watch the first episode to learn more about paraphrasing techniques. I also included further information from the task and the charts to show how the percentages are divided. In terms of their age groups, marital status, as well as whether or not they have children. It's always a good idea to pay full attention to both the stem of the task and the charts to improve your introduction. It looks awesome, I believe. Don't you think so? Because our introduction gives the name of the illustrations, states what it shows, and uses additional key information from the task. So that's all about our introduction. Now let's get to the second paragraph. As we have already discussed in a well-organized summary, our introduction is followed by an overview, although it could also be placed at the end of the summary. Please also remember that the specific details are to be avoided in our overview. So let's take another look at our bar charts. While trying to come up with an appropriate overview, ask yourself, are Americans generally happy or unhappy? That is to say, is there any noticeable point about the extent of their happiness? Who are happier, married or unmarried people? What about the effect of children on the overall ratings of married couples? In other words, does having children affect married couples' level of happiness? As you can see, Americans' level of happiness does not exceed 50% by any means. Moreover, it is evident that having children does not lead to more or even less happiness. So that's our two key features, which would in turn shape the way we organize our body paragraphs. Now let's see how we can put our key points into an overview. Overall, happiness levels in the US are below 50%. However, married people tend to be happier than unmarried people, whether or not they have children. Please pay attention to the way I use the conjunctive adverb however to draw a contrast between the two clauses. 
It's also worth bearing in mind that almost all conjunctive adverbs are usually preceded and followed by punctuation marks. In addition, we can make use of comparatives and superlatives to incorporate comparisons into our summary. In this case, using the comparative adjective happier than, I drew such a comparison. Alright everyone, that's all about our overview. Now, let's move on to our body paragraphs. Following the overview, we are to provide details and a specific information with regard to the charts. In order to follow a logical order, I will compare ratings related to the first bar chart in one paragraph and the effects of having children on such ratings as shown in the second chart in a different paragraph. So here's my first body paragraph with this specific information. In the beginning, I wanted to note that among married people, three age groups could be grouped considering their similar percentages. So I wrote, according to the charts, 44 to 45% of married people in ages ranging from 18 to 29, 30 to 49, as well as 65 and over are happy, while slightly fewer 40% of those in the 50 to 64 age group are happy. Then I decided to make a similar comparison among unmarried people. I wrote, in contrast, only 21 to 22 percent of unmarried people are happy in all age groups, apart from those aged 65 and over. Here, there is a significant difference with 34 percent of people being happy. As you can see, I classified the age groups according to their similarities, with the only outlier being the oldest age group, significantly different at 34%. Please pay attention to the way I made use of the cohesive device here to make sure the paragraph stays cohesive and coherent. The deictic expression here, whose meaning depends on the previous statement, is a typical example of how to add unity to our paragraphs. In any case, classifying features according to their similarities is a good technique to provide a summary, especially when there is a plethora of them. Alright then, let's move on to the second body paragraph. As I could see no significant difference among different groups, I decided to start with the topic sentence highlighting the very same point. So I wrote, having children appears to have little effect on happiness levels. Then I ordered the percentages from highest to lowest. Accordingly, I wrote, the percentage of happy married people with children under 18 is 44%, while it is 43% for those without children, and 41% for couples with children over 18. As you may have noticed, whenever I refer to a statistic, I also refer to its corresponding unit of measurement. Finally, please bear in mind that the word percent accompanies a specific number, whereas the word percentage is used more generally without a number. So, I guess that's all about it. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you very much everyone for watching this episode. Till next time, bye-bye for now.